Hey everyone, it's Sunday morning, uh, Palm Sunday, and I'm just beginning a whole barrage of blog posts, uh, videos, and all kinds of materials on this week. This week, of course, for Christians, whether they're Catholic or Protestant or just a simple Bible believer type, unaffiliated, or even people interested in the historical Jesus is very important. We call it the last days of Jesus, the last week of Jesus. And most calculations start with Sunday, with Jesus entering the city, and the crucifixion on Friday. I'm going to suggest an alternative for the crucifixion and try to convince you of that. And... Uh, I noticed there's a little light halo over my head from the ceiling. I thought that was appropriate. I didn't arrange it. I guess I could move right under it. There you go. Uh, but it's actually just the way the sun is reflecting this morning into my room in Charlotte, North Carolina, and then shooting up to the ceiling. So um, let me get started with this. I've got a whole series of videos that I'm going to begin highlighting on YouTube and mentioning them in various kinds of posts. They're already there, but I'm gonna put them together for you. And a couple of them are lectures and other kinds of uh, materials. A couple of them are audio, you can listen to them. But right now I wanna call your attention to a my blog, jamestaver.com. And I'm going to issue you a challenge. So I'm going to share the screen and I'll be reduced up to the corner. But I think you can see me there. And uh, this is the blog post. It, if you go to the home page uh, right here, Tabor blog. Actually, there, the home page, visit site. This is how it looks. And you can see that's my latest post right there. By the way, this one, I've really been pushing lately. If you haven't looked at that yet on YouTube, uh, I just did a video yesterday because I've been asked for years, you know, explain Gnosticism. And here you've got a great uh, series of uh, videos. Two so far, there's going to be four altogether from David Ray. But back to Holy Week. So if I click on this, this is jamestaver.com, and I click on this entry, here's the challenge. I hereby offer my loyal readers a challenge. Read and study all of these blog posts during the next eight days. Whether you agree or disagree, I think you will learn a lot, and this includes Jews, Christians, or others. You could put anything in that category. A lot of my interested readers and followers on the blog, YouTube, uh, social media might not consider themselves, you know, card carrying, confessing Christians. And they have a variety of approaches to what they think about Jesus. But I think all of them, almost without exception, are very interested in what I would call the historical figure of Jesus. Tracking Jesus, as I call it, when I do tours. What do we know about Jesus? How do we know it? So whether you disagree or agree, whoever you are, it is on this week that the worlds of Judaism and Christianity cross paths, and even Islam to some extent, but not in the same narrative way. So Jesus is eating a Last Supper. Uh, whether it's a Passover meal or not is controversial because we have two sources. We have the Synoptic Gospels with Mark as our main source, Matthew and Luke following. But in this case, Luke even has, I think, a more, uh, I don't know, authentic or interesting take on the redaction or editing of this uh, take my take this bread for my body, take this cup for my blood, and so forth. But then John puts it before the Passover, and I talk about that in these posts. Either way, Jews are keeping Passover. Christians are observing 
Palm Sunday, usually Good Friday and Easter. And I'm going to suggest some alternatives for those. The results are fascinating. And I will catch you on the other side, on the other end of the week, eight days from now, Monday after Easter. Actually, it might even be nine days, but East, after Easter Sunday. So here's my little image. And uh, I began to uh, talk about, I say, once again, Holy Week has arrived. Today is Palm Sunday and so forth. And then I go down. And this is called Digging Deeply Into the Sources. So look at this. These are blog posts. Did Jesus claim to be the Messiah and anticipate his suffering? Or was that written later by the gospel writers? This is my greatest discovery. I've got a whole video on it in YouTube. The last winter, a Jesus hides out in Jordan. Where did Jesus spend the months from December to April in the year 30? December 29 to April 30, when he went down to Jerusalem. Uh, last days of Jesus, a decisive, a decisive confrontation. Last days of Jesus, a final messianic meal. Was Jesus' last supper a Passover meal? Are you getting exhausted yet? You got to read all these. Eat my body, drink my blood. Did Jesus ever really say that? Jesus died on a Thursday, not a Friday. Standing again with Jesus, this is about basically Pilate's judgment seat, the Eke Homo, Eke Homo Revisited, where was that? I just took a group to Israel, and we stood on Pilate's judgment seat, guaranteed, authentic, the place, the Praetorium, and it's not in the old city along the Via Della Rosa. Uh, tourists don't know that yet, but Historians and archaeologists do, and many, many people are learning it. Locating Golgotha, where was it? Was it the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which probably 98% of academics go along with? The Garden Tomb, north of Damascus Gate, so-called Gordon's Calvary, or as I would argue, the Mount of Olives. I know that's different, but take a look. The strange ending of Mark, why it makes all the difference. The most important 10 verses of the Gospels to read Easter morning. So you can save those for Easter and read them. What really happened Easter morning? The surprise ending of the lost Gospel of Peter. What did Paul, now we're going to Paul, you can see this is chronological. What did Paul claim to have seen when he says, last of all, he appeared to me? What, is he, what does he mean appeared? Why a spiritual resurrection is the only sensible option. That doesn't mean the immortal soul sailing off to heaven. It's resurrection of the dead, but it's not the corruptible flesh and blood body, I argue here. How faith in Jesus' resurrection developed an old, new hypothesis. So it's old, but it's new. People have just forgotten it. The Jesus tomb story, everybody talks about the Taupiot tombs, and you'll hear lots of people say, well, that was several years ago, and the all the uh, real academics refuted that. It doesn't hold up. Well, this is actually an article responding to a couple of my colleagues uh, whom I honor and uh, respect, but respectfully disagree, as we say. And they're arguing that the evidence doesn't hold up, and I think it does. Not as proof, but just it shouldn't be dismissed. Uh, the 1980 discovery of the East Taupiot Jesus tomb, what we know 40 years later. We have learned a lot. I have learned a lot just in the past, uh, what is it, since 2005, 2006, when we began to talk about this. Uh, just since then till now, so much learned. And this is the latest that I think most people have never looked at. New evidence on the James Ossuary and its probable connection to the Talpiot tomb. Uh, even the scholars who doubt the thesis that this could be the Jesus family tomb have all said that if you could get the James Ossuary in there, assuming it's not a fake, which I certainly don't think it is, uh, and got other posts on that. I didn't put all the James Ossuary material. If you're not familiar with that controversy, stay on the blog and just do up in the uh, on a browser, it's up here, uh, the find thing, and you can type in James Oshuary here. I'll show you. 
much there is James Ossuary. And all of a sudden, you're going to get all these posts on the James Ossuary. Look at that. All kinds of things here, folks. So back to the main uh, post here. Uh, while you're there, uh, check out the Patreon if you want. Uh, I give people, if you become one of my patrons, uh, it's as low as $5 a month, and you get the same as somebody giving uh, $10,000 a month, which nobody does, by the way, obviously, but I'm just joking. But anyways, it, what it does is it puts you in a circle with me, and I'm going to begin next month monthly Zoom meetings with the patrons, because I get, you know, probably 200 emails a day and people asking questions and commenting and reacting, and then all the comments on Facebook and YouTube, you know how it is on social media. I mean, you, you can't keep up with even just the comments, much less respond to them. And they're a mix of the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I want to pull people together that are really interested in my work. And this is how I do that. The money is all used for projects. It's not personal funds for me. It's all put in a special account and it could have to do with DNA testing. It could have to do with anything that uh, costs money when you're carrying out research. Uh, sign up for notifications of the blog posts here. And then I have a newsletter. I send it every month, sometimes twice a month. Sometimes if there's some breaking news or something, I, I send it out. I never share emails with anybody and I never use them for commercial purposes. So that's my pitch. Uh, I'm going to stand with it and not give up and I'll stop the share and just say, I hope you will benefit from all the things that are going to be up this week. So take care wherever you live around the globe. Uh, I just looked today at all of the countries that the blog is reaching and it's, I think every country except Iran, and I'm sure there's some people watching in Iran, but it's probably blocked and they have to get ways of getting around it. And I think the other was uh, one of the Stans. I think it was uh, Turkmenistan or something. So I'm not sure what their political situation is, but every other country in the world, uh, I got at least one person reading the blog and I'll put that up somewhere uh, on probably on the blog, because I, I did a little screenshot of all the countries. So I want to say uh, greetings around the world, wherever you are. Uh, it's Sunday here. What time is it? It's uh, one minute till noon, Sunday, Eastern time. And I'm, I'm recording this and I'll post it, uh, edit it a little bit and post it. So this is a 19 minute presentation. I, I'll stay under 20 and check out the YouTube channel. It's going to be a fire hose. It already is a fire hose. And uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel also. It really helps the algorithms. Take care, everybody. Really good to see you.